As someone who's spent much of the last decade studying some of the key social and business trends that are affecting the world around us, um, I find it fascinating when research offers us, I guess, patterns that help us make sense of what we're seeing in our experience. And I find it interesting, I've spent the last three years tracking just over 500 brands, looking at the difference between brands and businesses, organisations that are achieving enduring long-term success and relevance and contrasting them with businesses and brands that are falling by the wayside, that are losing the battle for relevance. The fascinating thing about this research is the pattern that has formed. In fact, you know, if you look, for instance, at any business or brand or organisation around the world and you look at its relevance over time, okay, uh, the pattern or the cycle that will form for any business or brand is one that looks basically like this. It's a, a typical bell curve type shape and it's broken up into four different phases. Okay, Now in the early stages of any new brand or, or business or organisation, in those early stages relevance is pretty low because you know, if, you've, if you've been in a startup company you know what it's like. It's the, the fake it till you make it stage of business where you're still trying to figure out who your target market is. I mean it's pretty difficult to be relevant to a target market when you don't know who they are just yet. But of course as time goes on you, you become more deliberate, more strategic, your relevance begins to grow. And of course if you keep doing the right things long enough you will pass the first trigger on this curve where you go from phase one to phase two. This trigger is called the tipping point. And the tipping point of course is where momentum starts to kick in. People start to become aware of you. They start to talk about you and your brand, your products, your services. Now you'll know when you've really entered phase two because your competitors will start to rip off your ideas. They start to emulate what you're doing. Now, when you get to the, the, high, uh, the top of phase two here, you enter a point that um, Derek Zoolander would call the so hot right now stage for any business or any brand. And let me think of some businesses and brands that are in that so hot right now zone at the moment, who are highly relevant, highly successful. It seems they sort of can't put a foot wrong. You, you think, for instance, uh, of Ikea, um, Zara, the clothing retailer. I would say Hyundai, the car maker, is in that zone. Um, Samsung, I think, would be in that zone right now. Interesting question as an aside is, are Apple still in that so hot right now zone or have they started to, to pass their peak? It's an interesting thought. Okay, but while this, this so hot right now zone is incredibly exciting and certainly very profitable, can I put it to you, looking at the history of companies around the world, this so hot right now zone is the single most dangerous and vulnerable time on this entire curve. Because when you're highly relevant and kicking goals and achieving success, there's a massive temptation to start to rest, to rest on your laurels, start to relax, become just a tiny bit complacent, even arrogant. Now what often you know, it creeps in here is a dynamic that I call the intoxication of success. You even start to become, I guess, seduced by, by the notion that, oh, we're so big, so successful, we could never fail, we could never fall. And what that tends to lead to is a degree of, of laziness. And yet the thing is, when you're at the top here, highly relevant, this is the time for reinvention, not for relaxing. I mean, truly, at this point here, if you don't do the right things, where you start to, to fall back and rest on your laurels, if you start to coast, to drift, okay, if you do that long enough, you'll pass a second point on this curve called the turning point. The turning point is like your peak relevance. And can I suggest to you, you will know the second, the very moment you've passed the turning point because there'll be this internal gnawing sense that the, the effortless momentum you used to have just sort of isn't there anymore. It's almost like you're just going through the motions now. Now many business owners will describe this as being like they've lost, they're losing their mojo. Okay, but what they're actually noticing is they're in the early stages of losing relevance. And you, what you tend to see is businesses, organizations, brands, industry associations, even though they start to go into phase three and lose relevance, they enter a stage called denial. And they start to ignore that sense that they're maybe not as hot as they used to be. And they ignore it until normally somewhere around here. This is a point that we call crisis. And crisis, of course, is when the numbers start to catch up. And at first it was a bad month, then it's a bad quarter, then suddenly you've had a bad year, and it's a bad decade. And they're like, okay, the writing on the wall is clear. You're not as hot as you used to be. In fact, some of those competitors that when you were at the top were down here, now they're the ones winning all the awards. They're in the so hot right now zone. And can I put it to you, this point of crisis, while it's terrifying, it can be a gift. It can be an absolute gift. You know, necessity truly is a mother of invention. Because at this point here of crisis, if you do the right things, you can actually turn this around and start regaining 
relevance getting back into that so hot right now zone. And of course, any business or brand that has had long-term relevance for many, many decades will have gone through multiple cycles of this rise and a bit of a dip and then recovery, the crisis, then recover again. The longevity is very rarely linear. It always follows cycles and patterns a little bit like this. And yet at this point of crisis, if you do the wrong things or you just do nothing, which is so often the case, you'll continue on this downward slide past the third and final trigger here called the um, tanking point, and eventually you become completely and utterly obsolete, irrelevant, go out of business, you know, in bankruptcy. Now you think for many businesses and brands, I mean Kodak in its traditional form took 131 years to do this. I mean, you imagine, for instance, Atari took between 18 and 23 years to go from here to here. MySpace took only seven or eight years to do this whole journey, if you, if you think about it. Now, here's the challenging question, though. For your business or your brand right now, where are you on this curve? Now, that can be confronting. I remember a, a number of months ago working with one client, and they're a, a consumer goods company that any of you would know about. They're a worldwide, well-known brand. And for decades, they've been at the top of their industry. They've been the brand of the business everyone looked to and said, if we could just be like them, we'll have made it. And it, we went through a diagnostic tool designed to help you figure out your silent pulse, which is actually the measure of your relevance right now. It actually determines where you are on this curve. And they figured out that they were about here. They'd in six years gone from here to here. That was confronting. Okay, my challenge to you is this, be honest. Where are you on this curve right now? In fact, if you want to do that diagnostic to see what your silent pulse is, to see where you are on the curve, go to the URL mysilentpulse.com. Again, that URL mysilentpulse.com. It'll actually give you an idea of where you are on this curve or this cycle. The reason it's so critical, even though it can be confronting news, is that where you are on the curve, I guess, gives you indications, tips, hints as to what you're going to need to do in the coming months and years in order to win the battle for relevance.